The one flaw that nobody in the boot world seems to be able to fully fix is making a waterproof boot. And we've seen multiple ways of doing it and they work to some degree, but every single one has at least one flaw that they're not able to fix. For instance, waterproof linings, like in this Danner, they eventually split and wear out. Waterproof leather, like in this pair of Nyx boots, sometimes the water leaks through the thread. Um, the jungle boot, easy in, easy out, has its own flaws, obviously. The bunny boot, fully water out, but then you have pooling water. And then even the, even the bean boot has its own flaws with thread leaching through and some of the flaws that we've talked about in these videos or in this video. But this muck boot offers a new way of trying to solve that problem that I think people have been sleeping on because I did. And that's why I'm re-recording this video over again on Sunday night. So let's run this through a test, cut it in half to really see if this is the best way to make a waterproof boot, or is this just another failed attempt to fix an unfixable problem of waterproof boots? And thanks to Muck Boots for sponsoring this video. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is the original Muck Boot Company. The style is the Outscape Max Ankle Boot. They weigh just over a pound. They retail for $130 and they're made in China. And the way that Muck positions this boot is part of the new Outscape Max collection. The Outscape Max Ankle Boot is a high performance all-terrain boot inspired by our ever popular Outscape and Apex collections. 100% waterproof construction and a 10 inch collar opening for easy on off coupled with a muck skin upper offering reduced weight without sacrificing elite protection. I knew what some of those words meant. Lots of marketing, branding and jargon in there, but that's what we're gonna try to break down to, to cut through that to see what this boot actually is. So why am I re-recording this? Well, I was at the ski during event supporting our three Rose Anvil teams where they, they, they're on the horses and they're pulling the skis behind them. We have a little mini doc coming out soon about that. But when I was there, it was cold and it was snowy and it was just miserable. And every other cowboy that I saw there was wearing a pair of muck boots. So let's start figuring that out, why these tough, hardened cowboys are wearing muck boots over anything else and what all the marketing jargon and, and words that they threw in the description actually mean. So let's start looking with, at the upper first. And I think the upper is a big clue of why they're so loved because they call it the muckskin upper. And I believe it's this flexible part, this flexible material, and they say it's 100% waterproof and 100% muck proof. What is muck proof, you might ask? Fully protected from wet, windy snow, mud, and sticky situations. So to see what that really is about, we put it in the waterproof tank up to just the rubber first, passed with flying colors. Then we took it all the way to the top of the collar, still waterproof, and just for fun, we did our own muck test. But what that muck test showed me is, is yeah, they're, they're muck proof and mud doesn't get in the inside of the boot. More importantly, when you're done with them, you can take a hose and just hose them off and it's not like trying to get mud out of leather, which is a nightmare. So now we know what it does and how it performs. What is this muck skin material? Well, they don't really say specifically what it is, but we cut a little slit out of it and it looks just like neoprene. And if you don't know what neoprene is, it's what they make wetsuits out of. And I, and I think it serves the same purpose of a wetsuit by being more flexible, more comfortable and better looking than just rubber or any other type of material you might wanna wrap your whole body in. So I'm 90% sure this is a neoprene, maybe specially formulated for these guys, but ultimately it just looks like neoprene. And I think that's a big key of why those cowboys like these boots because it insulates and, and thermal regulates rather than just trapping all that heat in. It's flexible and it moves with you. It's squishy and comfortable. It's extremely durable for a material that is flexing nonstop. Because if you think of a skier, all that those joints are constantly moving all day, every day, and it's very durable. And, and most importantly, it's fully waterproof. And the thing about this boot that I didn't realize until the first time I recorded this is this neoprene runs all the way down to the, the toe of the boot. So it's not just here in the shaft. These rubber overlays are over top of, of this neoprene-like material. But what about the inside of this boot? Well, if you look, it's fully lined with fleece all the way to the toe of the boot, which is gonna wick your moisture, the sweat that you get in there, or any little bits of droplets of rain or snow that gets in there. It's gonna keep you warm, but there is a downside to fleece, and that's that it's just not the most durable material. It's like having a blanket on the inside of your boots. And so that might be the first fail point in this boot, especially at the heel where you're gonna be lifting up and where it's not a, a tight boot, you're gonna get some heel slip. But that's just part of the game with these waterproof boots is you have to have some lining to some degree and it's always one of the weakest spots in a boot. So you're, you're trading the comfort and the uh, moisture wicking and the warmth for uh, at the cost of being a little bit less durable. But I promise you, as someone who's raised on a farm, moving sprinkler pipes all summer, every summer, in a pair of rubber boots, I can unequivocally say, I'd much rather have a lining that would wear out a little bit faster rather than just having rubber or even like the bare side of neoprene rubbing against your skin. Because if you ever worked in rubber boots, you know what I'm talking about. If bare skin even touches that material, you chafe immediately. 
and they stink and they're sweaty and, and sweat and, and irrigation water pools in your boots. But one thing that does make that a little bit more manageable is this insole. And, and you know, most of the time when we talk about insoles, they're just very basic. We barely covering them, cover them. This insole does seem to have some purpose and functionality behind it because it's removable, first of all, and it's a dual density insole where you've got this top layer of basically a memory foam. It's really soft and squishy. And then on the bottom, you have a polyurethane foam that's a closed celled foam where it almost feels like rubber on the bottom. And you can see these holes in the forefoot and all these channels throughout the sole or the insole. And I think what they've attempted to do with this insole is give you comfort with that top layer, but on this bottom layer, any pooling water is gonna go through these little holes and sit underneath of your foot. And then all these channels underneath of here are gonna hold that water so that every time you, you step, it doesn't squish back up into your feet. It's very similar actually to the jungle boot where instead of squishing that water out, this kind of does the opposite thing and, and holds that water so it's not squishing up into your feet. I don't know if it works or not, but there clearly was some idea of the functionality in this insole. And ultimately there's really no way to prevent pooling water in this style of boot, but at least with this insole, they tried to fix some of that problem with some functionality in an insole where most brands don't even have a second thought about it. But the number one thing that I, I think makes these boots so popular is something you, you can't even really see, and that's the midsole and outsole. Because this boot is basically built just like any modern comfortable foam and rubber outsole boot, because it has exactly that. It's got the rubber outsole, the foam midsole, a fiberglass shank on the inside. So basically you get the comfort of a modern boot with all the benefits of a rain or rubber boot because this, this midsole foam is pretty soft. It comes in at a 30 to 40 shore A. The rubber outsole is hard enough to be durable, but still give you grip at 60 shore A. The lugs are five and a half millimeters deep, and they're specifically designed to dislodge mud, allegedly. You know, obviously in the, uh, and we'll put some muck test footage here, but you can see they are angled so that the mud doesn't get as stuck in there. And they're pretty widely spaced, which is gonna make them less durable, but it's what helps give you the grip and the mud, and it helps that mud dislodge. So it looks like what they've done with this boot is combine the bottom of a modern boot, the vamp of a rubber boot, and the upper of a wetsuit. But there are some flaws inherent to this design that you need to consider. So let's cut this thing in half and I'll show you what's on the inside. That was a straight cut. This might be the best straight cut shoe I've ever done. I just screwed up right at the end. <laughs> All right, I got it cut in half a few days ago, but let's see what's inside. So from this cross section, it looks like basically any other modern boot like Blundstones, Ariats, Redbacks, because it, it's built exactly like them. But from the outside, it is that modernized, cool looking like uh, rain boot, muck boot style. So now that we know everything on the inside, what is this boot? Well, it's exactly what we thought. It's this chimera of a regular boot, a rubber boot, and a wetsuit all combined into one. And it's way more complex than I thought it was gonna be when we first got this boot. I, just, I honestly just thought it was gonna be like a, a rubber boot. And we just tell a story about rubber boots. But this is actually a pretty smart way of solving the unsolvable problem of a waterproof boot. But like I mentioned, there are some issues and things to consider when getting this specific style of boot. It's still never gonna be as breathable as a regular non-waterproof boot. It's also gonna take a while for these boots to dry because of all the internal components and the fleece that's gonna hold onto that water rather than just a rubber boot that you can just dump out the water and half an hour later it's dry. And it's worth considering this fleece lining if you're going for ultra durability. But to me, those flaws are the flip side of some of the biggest pros of this boot. And I think that's why so many of these country boys are wearing them at the ski drawing event. But they also go above modern boots in certain ways because they're way more versatile in true wet conditions than modern boots. And maybe most importantly for this casual version of the boot, they're really good looking. You know, I, compared to any other water and rain boot, just a rubber boot, they've really modernized this style specifically for them. And it's not just this boot, they've got a bunch of other like tech wear looking boots. It's kind of like a bunny boot 
but in the same way that a wolf is similar to Yorkie, if you get my drift, because most of the cowboys were wearing the, the, more, the higher versions that's specifically made for work. And this is definitely more of a casual boot. What is this actually for? Well, it's a great backdoor boot. It's a great kicker. It's a great garden boot, a rain boot, a work boot, a shop boot. Any of those, uh, any job where you're standing all day, you need comfort, but you need some warmth and the water resistance. Basically anything you need to be dry and comfortable in, that's what this boot does. But the most relevant purpose of this shorter boot to me was when my buddy Brian texted me before his trip to Japan and was asking me, he was like, wait, I need a waterproof boot that's not gonna leak, that's comfortable, that I can hike in, that's easy on and off for travel. And unfortunately for Brian, I didn't have this boot cut in half or didn't really understand this boot before he left. But this is the boot I would have recommended to him for that specific purpose. And so now, finally, is it worth the price? For $130, well, compared to most modern boots built in a similar way, I think it's right in the right ballpark. Obviously, you can get a uh, like a cheap rain boot on Amazon or Walmart for 20 bucks, and you can get a leather waterproof boot for even more money. But for $130, I feel like it's in the right ballpark, and I think it's a fair price for this boot, and especially for what it does. And because it's so unique in a market where there's just either really uncomfortable, ugly rain, like, rubber boots, or you've got to deal with some of the downsides of this other way of solving the water boot issue. So let me know what you think, and if you want me to cut apart the tall versions that's all the cowboys wearing, because I think they're a little bit more work oriented and I want to see how it compares to a more casual version. And if you want to see that, support this video. If you want to see the bean boot, the jungle boot, the bunny boot, Nick's uh, waterworks boot, or the Danner series, I'll put the links to all those below to, to round out your waterproof in knowledge and information. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing it because it helps us continue to show you what you're actually spending your hard earned money on, especially when it comes to boots that are built for function rather than just form. So thank you guys. See ya. Thank you.